And we're talking with Peter because he's written a book about bouldering, and we'll get to that in a moment. Peter, first tell us, what is bouldering? Bouldering is a form of uh, rock climbing that's practiced without ropes, typically on smaller sized rocks. It could even be on the sides of buildings and obviously artificial climbing walls. Uh, that are usually, these rocks are usually less than about 15 feet in height, so that a fall off them is usually not fatal, uh, usually not even injurious, I guess. Um, the focus is on movement and on solving what boulders call problems. So difficult passages, difficult moves, or sequences of moves. One of the challenges that is uh, most compelling to me about bouldering <coughs> is the intellectual component, to, to s because it, there are no, um, there's, there's an element of physicality, clearly, but everything is laid out in front of you. So, so all the holes you can generally see very easily from the ground. You can sort of figure out all the stuff. There's not a lot of complicated logistics, usually. So you simply walk up to this boulder and see what has to be done. But to actually do it often requires an intense level of thought, concentration, focus, mental clarity, all those kinds of uh, qualities, I guess, yeah. This urge to climb rocks, don't most people leave that urge behind about age seven or eight? Well, the interesting thing is, like a lot of urges, I, th I think a lot of people, and, and I, th I think you see this, for instance, in the college context of faculty, for instance, are often seized by something about their discipline at a young age and le uh, never let go of it. In essence, in some small way, they stay seven, right? A, lo a very, very long time. And bouldering has that, that promise as well, I think. Um, you, you think that you would cast aside that urge to climb a small rock at the age of seven. I probably started really having those kinds of experiences probably about the age of 10. And so now I'm 47. So I mean, I kind of like the idea of the, the, the kid who just sees a rock and wants to climb it. It's like the best way of learning bouldering. You've written a book. Why did you write this book? Well, I wrote the book uh, in part because I was asked to write the book. There's always a great reason to write the, the Mountaineers uh, books, uh, which is a, the sort of nonprofit publishing arm of the Mountaineers, a uh, very, very major national climbing organization um, in, in, in the Pacific Northwest, um, asked me to write this after reading a lot of my online writing. And I focus a lot on bouldering. And they wanted a volume to finish a series of climbing instruction books called the Mountaineers Outdoor Expert Series. And so they liked the way that I wrote, and they liked the fact that I focused on bouldering. And I said, would you like to do this? And I said, sure. And the other reason that I wrote is because actually I have a great deal of respect for other people who've written climbing manuals in the past that I read and, and reread, and in fact have kicking around somewhere, you know, these dog-eared copies, you know, clearly read and gone over again. And you know, I learned a great deal from that. And my hope was in some sense to carry that forward a little bit and do the same thing with bouldering. You mentioned in your book, Peter, that bouldering is part art, and you are an artist. Uh, why do you say that bouldering is art? I think the ways in which art and climbing intersect for me is, I used the word problem earlier, and so there's this sense of, of kicking things around a lot in art. So I'll, I'll start, with, in essence, with a blank, typically, not, yeah, usually a piece of wood. Um, and then I'll start putting some things down and seeing what emerges from that. And if I like it, I'll keep sort of working in that vein. If I don't like it, I'll start altering it or painting over, essentially starting over, but always with the idea of the previous failures in mind. So, so there's, my paintings are typically multi-layered. In, in bouldering, the same thing begins to happen. If it's, if it's worth doing, typically you go there again and again. And so you're constantly looking for new insights and new angles on the problem but always with the reservoir of previously acquired knowledge. And so you have to keep the big picture of kind of where you're going, but also accumulate all these little impressions and ideas and insights that you know, sort of build the picture in both senses, whether it's climbing or whether it's an art. If you had one message about bouldering you could leave with people, what would it be? Well, I'd like people uh, to think about uh, the value of climbing as a, as a sport. Um, in term, not necessarily in terms of adventure, although I think that's, that's definitely worthwhile, but also in terms of a great way of getting out into the world, into the world of nature, into, into uh, we talked a little bit about thought, and, you know, the sense of focus and clarity that, that bouldering can bring. 
and the way in which it can be part of your life for many, many decades if you choose to uh, make it that way. I mean, you and I could go to Horsetooth and be there in 10 minutes, literally driving right from the Front Range parking lot, and be climbing easy, you know, this very, very easy climbs all afternoon just for fun, right? And do that for an hour or two or however long we want. Almost, a, almost like going for a walk, except that you're climbing instead, or uh, um, you know, or like for a run. And, and and the idea that you can do this without, you know, someone else being around or all the the the, the technical equipment and all that stuff, I, I find very very compelling. Um, I think climbing has been a big part of my life, and and with this book, I hope to encourage other people to make it part of theirs as well. <laughs>